Good evening. Welcome to another session of the precepts from the Proverbs. As we have mentioned last session, the way that Solomon conveys the Proverbs had changed since Proverbs chapter 10. It shifted from what is called a familial address from Proverbs chapters 1 through chapters 9, where we see Solomon repeating the phrase, my son. And that, uh, that familial address is actually the execution of the parental prerogative of Israel to teach their children the will and the way of the Lord that is in the law of the Lord. Now, in Proverbs chapter 10 onwards, we would see a more general discourse where Solomon presents wisdom and folly side by side. In Proverbs chapter 10, he contrasted the way of wisdom and folly. Here in Proverbs chapter 11, we would see more contrasts and conclusions that Solomon derived regarding wisdom and folly. Now, we have to bear in mind that when the Proverbs talk about wisdom, it is always connected with obedience to the law of the Lord. Now, we would see that in scriptures as we read Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 6. Moses, in commanding the children of Israel, said these words. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 6, Moses says, Keep therefore and do them. This is pertaining to the Old Testament law that God gave Israel. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of all of the nations. We shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Remember, when Proverbs talk about wisdom, it's always connected with obedience to the law of the Lord. Now, since wisdom is connected with obedience to the law of the Lord, it is also connected with Israel's righteousness. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 24 to 25, we would see Moses declare how Israel, in their dispensation, can be made righteous. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24 to 25, Moses says, and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Hence, when Solomon presents wisdom, it is connected with obedience to the law of the Lord and it is connected to Israel's righteousness in their dispensation of the law. Thus, when we look at the, word, the, the Proverbs, think about it this way. Wisdom equals obedience to the law equals righteousness. Now, the inverse is also true. If wisdom is connected with obedience to the law, and righteousness, then we could also see that folly is connected with disobedience to the law and therefore unrighteousness. So when we think about wisdom, think about obedience to the law and righteousness for Israel in their dispensation. And in the same way, when we think about folly for Israel, it would be in disobedience of the law and unrighteousness. Now with that, let me turn our attention to the focus of our study would be Proverbs chapter 11. Now bear in mind that when uh, that as we read through these uh, verses in Proverbs chapter 11, do mark the synonyms of wisdom and folly. Notice how Solomon contrasts, correlates, and compares with the conjunctions in the parallelisms. Remember, when we see the conjunction but, that will show us a contrast. When we see the conjunction and, that would show a correlation. And when we see the words so and much more, then we would see how Solomon makes a comparison. So let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 11, 
And let's start reading from verse number one. Now Solomon says, A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Notice the contrast. Verse number two, When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall, fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Did you notice the contrasts of wisdom and folly? The wickedness and righteousness? Now let's see verse number 7. When a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish, and the hope of the unjust man perisheth. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. This would show us a correlation, and with this contrast correlation pattern in parallelisms in verses 1 to 8, this would show us the contrasting ends of the wise and the foolish, the righteous and the unrighteous. Now, all that thought, let's continue reading in verse number 9. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Notice the contrast again. Verse number 10. Let's see a correlation this time. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth. And when the wicked perish, there is shouting. Now this shows another pericope where we see the contrast of effects of the wise and the fool the righteous and the unrighteous. Let's continue reading. Verse number 11. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. The pattern goes back to contrasts. Verse number 15 shows us another correlation marking a pattern. Verse number 15 says, he that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it, and he that hateth suretyship is sure. A gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. Now, this is another pericope that shows the contrasting efforts of the wise and the foolish, the righteous and the unrighteous. Notice the contrast. There were contrasting ends, efforts, and effects. Now let's read on in verse number 17. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil, pursueth it to his own death. From the contrasts in verses 18 to 19, we would see in verse, uh, verses 17 to 18, we would see in verse number 19 a comparison. It goes back to the contrasting ends of the wise and the foolish, the righteous and the unrighteous, as with verses 1 to 8. Now, this would show us the literary device that is employed by Solomon, which is called a chiasm. Now, let's continue reading in verse number 20 that says, They that are of a froward heart 
are abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. It goes back to the contrast patterns. Now in verse 22, we would see a comparison. It says, As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. This shows the contrasting effects of the wise and the foolish, the righteous and the unrighteous. It goes back to what was discussed in verses 9 to 10. Now in verses 23 to 25, we would see the midriff of the chiasm showing the contrasting end, effects, and efforts of the wise and the foolish, the righteous and the unrighteous. We read in verse number 23, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is he that scattereth and yet increases, and there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. And to close the Proverbs literary device, we would read in verses 26 to 31, the contrasting efforts of the wise and the foolish, the righteous and the unrighteous, as we read these words. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessings shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come, un come unto him. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. The picture that is being shown here is simply wisdom equals obedience to the law equals righteousness for Israel in their dispensation and it results to blessings and life. The converse is also true as depicted by the contrasts that Folly is disobedience to the law and wickedness for Israel in their dispensation. And it ends with curses, death, and destruction. My friends, the truth that we can learn from here is that God's wisdom always leads to life. It is folly to reject God's wisdom and will only lead to death. As it was in the dispensation of the law, wherein the book of Proverbs is set, so is it with our dispensation of grace. We ought to know first that our wisdom is not in keeping the law, but rather in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 to 24, if we would turn to that, we would see what the wisdom that is given to us Gentiles in this dispensation of grace is. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22 to 24 says this. Apostle Paul, our apostle, writes these words. He says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are, call, are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. My friends, the wisdom of God for us Gentiles in this dispensation of grace is the preaching of Christ crucified, which is contained in the gospel message, which we could read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4, that says, 
Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Christ did the work for our salvation and absolute justification. The question remains today is whether you would trust in the sufficiency of the finished work of Christ that is His death for our sins, burial, and resurrection. Our prayer for you tonight is that you would indeed receive the wisdom that God gives us in this dispensation and trust Christ, believing the sufficiency of His finished work, which results in our salvation, eternal salvation, absolute justification, and eternal life. Let me admonish you tonight to reject this wisdom given to us in this dispensation of grace, which is the preaching of Christ crucified, will only end in judgment and eternal condemnation. I adjure you tonight, my friends, choose wisdom. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that the wisdom given to us is not the obedience to the law, but hearing the truth of the gospel of Christ who died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose again, that we may trust, believing the sufficiency of the finished work of Christ. We thank you, Father God, for this word. We thank you for this wisdom that you gave us. We pray that we would receive it and put our trust in the finished work of your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that the truths that we have received tonight simply burn in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So thank you very much for listening. We hope to catch you again in our future broadcasts. On Thursday, we continue our study of the Pauline Pastorate, the online Bible studies on the book of First Timothy. Now on Saturday, we have the Comfort Verses in Context and hope to catch you again next Monday for another session of the Precepts from the Proverbs. So thank you very much for listening. The Lord bless you.